Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today is the second video in growing your fall garden in flats, getting them started in flats, and then getting them out into the garden. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to plant these. I'm doing an entire fall gardening series on my YouTube channel if you want to subscribe. I have other videos on starting your seeds directly in the ground, starting them in flower boxes, starting them in containers. And the reason that you'd want to start in flats is because you don't have room in your garden because your summer crops are still out there. Today is August 23rd. I'm going to be removing a lot of these. The humidity finally broke. It feels cooler today. The cool weather is starting to roll in. These were started on the 9th, on August 9th. If you want to check out the first video, I'll link that. 14 days from putting the seeds in, the plants are to this size. I've got beets, peas, kohlrabi, arugula, lettuce, kale, cilantro, all ready to go out into the garden. The other thing you want to do is make sure that from when you put the seed down, in about 14 days, you get them into the ground. If you leave these in here too long, they're going to look healthy, but they're going to be kind of like bonsai plants. They're going to stay small, they're going to think that they're older, and they're going to start trying to do things that older plants do. And what that means is, when you get them into your garden, they may be a little bit stunted. They're not going to really flourish and take off, so you want to do that. If you're judging by germination, when you put the seeds in, after they germinate, about seven to ten days, you want to make sure you get them into your garden. All right, so let's go clear out some space. We'll set up the soil, get these planted. And again, please subscribe. I'll be doing an entire series on fall gardening. So I'll be doing other videos on how you tend to these, take care of them, and feed them over the fall. So one of the beds I'm going to use for my fall garden is this space right in here. Now, I was away for a bit. You know, the cucumbers are just overmatured, the plants beat up, I'm not really interested in trying to save it. So I'm going to pull all this out and we'll get to planting and setting up the soil right in this bed. Well the rain is back, but I was able to clear out the cucumber area here, take off any shredded hardwood, as much as you can, and just put it in a pile. You can use it later if you want. Um, I'm going to throw mine right into the compost. There's not going to be any need to really mulch your fall garden because it's going to be cooler and the water um, and moisture will all stay in there because of the weather cools down obviously. We're not going to turn the bed you know, to a foot deep or anything like that. We're just going to leave the soil, microbiology, worms all intact, however they are sitting in there. And we're just going to use a organic fertilizer across the top. I'll show you how I sprinkle that on. Not a whole lot. Somewhere around the 555. Scratch it into the surface and then after we get done planting we're going to give everything a drink of an organic water soluble fertilizer. So this is cotton seed meal and the only reason I'm using this is because I buy a lot of my organic fertilizers at the end of the season when they're on sale and this was only like two bucks instead of its regular price of seven, seven ninety nine. So this is a six nitrogen, two phosphorus, one potassium fertilizer. To keep it simple, just look for an organic that's around a 555 for your space. If the number's a little bit higher or lower in either direction, it really doesn't matter. Because I'm growing mostly leafy greens, leafy greens like nitrogen, so a 621 is perfect. But I don't want you worrying so much about these numbers. Any organic fertilizer is fine. I'm going to take a handful, that's probably three to four tablespoonfuls, and I'm going to sprinkle that over about a two foot by two foot square area. That's all I'm going to do. And I would work my way down the whole garden. This is, um, I think this is an eight foot bed. I don't remember if it's four by six or four by eight. I'm pretty sure it's a four by eight. So it'll be four handfuls going down there and it's just going to look like that. When I get to planting, I'm just going to mix it into the surface and then I'll set up the plant. So let me finish this. I'll bring the flats over here and we'll plant up the space. So these are the cool weather crops. Right in this space, I drew in some lines. Along here is going to be the kohlrabi. I'll show you how to plant that. That's right there. You could also, again, if you have the room, you can drop in seeds. I didn't have the room. Now I do. That's why you do transplants. Peas are going to go in here. These are a snow pod. This is a sugar snap. And these are, whoops, sorry. Those are purple potted sugar snap. And those are snow peas. And then over in that corner over there, going to be some lettuce plugs, arugula, and then I'm going to be dropping in the beets for beet greens right in here. The whole design principle behind here is the smaller plants are over here to the left. My son 
or the sun here tracks this way and it moves all the way around back to here and then it hangs out over here for most of the afternoon. You don't want to put the taller peas here, the taller plants there, because they're going to cast shadows across your garden. So the taller plants go here and I work my way over. So let's get to planting and I'm just going to pop these in real quick. Going to use the trellises that I had for the cucumbers right over the peas and that's going to work very nicely. So we're going to start with the peas and basically all I did was take the space that I'm going to work in and just mix the fertilizer in about two inches. Nothing spectacular. So in the first part of this video, I will link it. I planted two peas per these larger cells. I sell these at my seed shop if you're looking for seed starting supplies. And you can see how nice the roots are. You can just gently break them up, nothing fancy. And we have two peas per plug. And we're just gonna space these out about every two inches. Just with your finger about that far down drop them in and then gently fill around and press them in and that's all you have to do to get your pea transplants in again in the first video i talk about using these larger cells because you just will get so much root growth in peas in 10 to 14 days you don't want the tinier cells loosen them up loosen, <laughs> loosen them up just a little bit about an inch down and drop them in and you can space these two three four inches apart whatever you want to do they're good to grow you can really pack them in together in the case where I only have one plant just treat it as if there were two in there drop it in and press it in and then the fourth plug will go right in here just like that and I would just work my way all the way across. These are the sugar snaps, just to show you how I do the whole space. A couple inches down, smooth it over, make your holes. I'll fill all these in in, in a second. Off video save you a little bit of time again just loosen them up loosen them up whoa drop it in an inch down or so gently press around there and this is how quickly you can get your peas in I really recommend starting them in cells it gives you a nice little jump okay let me get these all set up all right now for the beets and I'm growing these just for the beet greens I may get a couple mature beets but the whole idea is for me to get the leafy greens off of here and again just mix in your organic fertilizer in there and don't worry about the numbers just try and hang around the 555 five, five. now if you have a plenty of fully composted material compost would be great to use right now I don't have any so I'm using the organic fertilizer the peas are over here you want to give them at least six inches because they're going to grow all over the place so the peas I'm sorry the beets again a couple inches apart doesn't matter if you're two three four inches apart and we're just going to drop a whole plug in there now you can see there's not as many roots like the peas the peas grow extremely fast and we're just going to drop the beets in support the leaves and press them in if we were growing for mature size beets we'd have to thin these down to just one plant these are all like when you drop in a beet seed it's actually a pod so you're going to get multiple sprouting plants but since we're just going for the greens we want a lot of plants in a small space and again nothing fancy with the organic fertilizer the lettuce is going to get taller again my sun ends up being over here so the arugula is smaller it's going to go right there and the loose leaf lettuce is going to go right there it's easier when you're using the six cells just to pop them Ooh, nothing in that one pop them all out
give the beets about six inches and then we're just going to drop in the arugula right in here I think I have five one of them didn't didn't sprout and drop it in. That's a cucumber root. That's too deep. You can come in from the side, lift it up. You do not have to be gentle or over wary. Just don't smash them. Okay, the arugula's in. Looks like we'll have six cells for the lettuce. This lettuce is not going to be grown to full size. When it gets about four inches, five inches tall, cut it off at the roots, leave the roots in, and more leaves will come up. Pop them all out. If you want to grow this to full size, thin it down to one plant. In this case, there's only two. That could get to a bigger size. And you're just dropping the plugs in, just like that. If you push them in too far, come in from the side. I don't know if you could see that on the camera. Like for instance, you just dig in from here, get underneath, and you just pop it up a little bit, and then press it in. This way you don't have to pull it back out and maybe damage the leaves or the roots. So that sets up peas, beets, arugula, the lettuce. Let's put in the kohlrabi. So kohlrabi is going to get pretty big. And it will put a little bit shade over here, but that's okay. Because again, my sun's going to be out on this side. So it's going to get plenty of sunlight. I get actually 10 or 12 hours here, depending on the time of year. But it will sit over here. They'll get their six hours of sun. Now the kohlrabi is really spindly and thin. That's because it's warm right now. They love the cool weather. But you're just going to pop them out. And you want these to be spaced apart at least four inches because they get big. I would say even six inches. I would take that back and go with six inches. And you're just going to drop one plug in. To plug in and you can put a little bit of the stem into the soil just don't pack around it it'll be okay let me finish this out and there's a couple of things that we still need to do snails and slugs will come in here and tear these apart in my area so I'm going to put down iron phosphate and then I'm going to put on a Captain Jack's dead bug dust on here too because I don't want the warm weather insects wiping these out and then we're going to feed them with a water soluble fertilizer Water-soluble fertilizer, organic, it has a higher nitrogen, about an 11. That's what I want for my leafy greens, for my fall garden. After I fertilize them with this, I'm not going to need to fertilize this anymore. You don't need to overdo it. There'll be plenty of fertilizer. The sluggo, which is iron phosphate, will take care of snails and slugs. It's changed the way I can garden here in my zone. Snails and slugs will wipe out everything. And then the uh, insect dust, that's Captain Jack's. I don't like putting dust down on leafy greens that I'm going to eat if it's within 14 days of harvest, but when they're small, it's perfectly fine. And this is ag fabric. A lot of people said when they're putting down their seedlings for the fall, the birds are coming in eating them. You can just cut up some ag fabric, garden fabric. It's for keeping insects off of your plants, not weed block. Don't confuse it. It's ag fabric is usually what it's called, agricultural fabric. But just cut it up as you need. You see the sunlight will go through. It'll protect them from birds. So first we're going to water everything in with the water-soluble fertilizer. Then we're going to put on these products. It's a two-gallon watering can and you're just going to really spread it out. One gallon on the four feet this side, another gallon over there. And you really don't need to put it on the leaves. You're going to mat them down if you hit them with this heavy stream of water. So I just go right along the sides. And I would do that all the way across, right down the middle of the peas, in between the kohlrabi, and I would water it in. Let's pretend I've watered everything for the iron phosphate. You want to just give it a sprinkle just like that. And you can see that it scatters. You don't need a lot of it. 
but it's baited. The snails and slugs will eat this. It'll take a couple days for them to die. In retrospect, I probably should have dropped this three days ago so that I wipe out anything that's around here because they may still come in and eat some of these. And then for the dust, I'd wait till the leaves were dry and just dust over the leaves. And that should get them off to a great start. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing fall gardening all the way through October. And let's just give you a look of everything that I've finished over here. Eight foot bed, fall garden vegetables, all ready to grow. Thanks for watching.